Good to have you back on this segment. Today, I'm going to be talking to a woman with fire under her wings. She's taking the makeup industry in Africa to a whole new level. Join me today as I talk with Tara Fela Drotoi on Visionary 101. excites you about being the CEO of House of Tara International? Well, there, there are lots of things. Uh, one of them is, is where we're coming from. Um, I started the, this business as a bridal makeup artist 13 and a half years ago, just going from house to house doing makeup, but then to be able to see the growth that we've experienced in the last 13 years is very exciting. Now tell me more about your vision, your, your global vision, because mm. I know you've done a lot in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. you, you've been at it for a while now, and you've done very well. Thank so let's, let's talk about the global aspect, which is where I, I, I see you're going yes. very soon. Um, it's interesting that a few things are happening. I have someone in the US, in the UK, who's extremely passionate about starting up House Hotel UK. Um, I have I see a transition also happening in Canada. I see something happening in Kenya as well. And I see something also happening in Amsterdam. Um, sometimes these growth don't happen the times that you want it to happen. But as you go cons to be consistent, then things like this begin to happen. And people who are passionate about the brand can say, you know what, I'm in the US. You may not be interested in running in the US, but I'm excited about doing so. And that can then propel us. So that's that's what I'm looking to do. It's that's, an expansion. That's a, wow. Yeah. So what what kind of relationship is it going to be? Is it, yes. I mean, uh, the people. Yes. Abroad, yes. It will be it, it will be a combination of different things. It could be a JV, which is a joint venture. It could be a franchise, somebody buying up the franchise, or it could be our own company. Meaning we went in there, we set it up from scratch to finish. We we took people from here and and okay. went there and developed the people there to then be able to run. Mm -hmm. And it's the same way we're running our branches in Kadru now or in Port Harcourt or in Ibadan or in in uh, Abuja. It's the okay. same the same model, okay. just replicated. But sometimes the models might change depending on the city that we're in. Mm -hmm. um, some things may not work in some cities, some mm -hmm. will work in some cities. So I think that that's, that's, that's the way in which we're finding that we're moving, the direction in which we're moving in. Let's talk about some other people that have, you know, modeled you, you know, that have been your role model over the years. There are few women, you know, I may be biased. Mostly women? Yes, actually. I don't know whether I have, I've never really, I think with mentorship for me, it's very tough for me to be, for me to see people who I don't have relationships with as mentors. Mm -hmm. um, it's very, very tough. I can admire them, but as mentors, no, or role models. Mm -hmm. Mrs. Ibukwa Awoshika is okay. one of my greatest mentors. Um, why? Because she's a woman who has seen build a, a, a built several companies mm. and very balanced as a mother and a wife. You should see her at home with her husband. You can't believe he's this big woman mm. because she's a different person. Yes. Yeah. And she's uh, not the boss. No, she's not the boss. That's I think that's totally totally because when you see her in the in the marketplace, you mm. see her as this powerful woman. She comes across like that way. But then she's also very soft when it comes to, you know, being a mother and being a wife. Mm. But also because of her ability, the what she's doing for the kingdom meaning the kingdom of God. And, and truthfully, as business owners who are Christians, we also understand the concept of kingdom development. And she has a missionary fund where they just finance missionaries in villages where people want to evangelize. And it's just amazing to see to see that, yes. Yes, um, there's also another lady who's Jumoke Adenowo. Um, she's not financing, in quotes, missionaries, but she's doing Kingdom work as well. And so she's, she's also one of your mentors. mentors yes, oh, um, she r runs a consulting firm called Edie Consulting. She's an architect, and you know, to be able to see women who are beautiful, fashionable, with her designer bag and a nice yeah. weave on, yeah. but then when she's sharing God's word with you, it just takes you to another level. Yeah. That is very insightful. Nika Gulesi as well. Um, the, her ability to be able to um, take a Nigerian brand like Rough and Tumble and and make you question whether it's really a Nigerian brand. Mm. But, you know, it's her ability to be able to um, express the brand in a global manner, such that when you walk into one of her, one of her stores, you don't even realize that you're in Nigeria. And, and they're the same all over. Yes, yes. All, all the stores are the same everywhere yeah. you go. Yeah, to yeah. Well. yeah, yeah. So very that well. that also is very admirable, mm. and um, it's nice to be able to have relationships with women like that because you look at them and they sit and you realize that they're women. Who could have been, you know, when they were your age? They probably had children at the same time at that age, and now they've all, you know, full, full-grown women with with children, older children in university. And then you still, you still see them consistent over the years. I think that's one of the things I most admire. Betty Rabo as well. 
mm. uh, publisher of Genevieve magazine. Yes. You know, she's she, really yeah, she's extremely elegant. And, you know, uh, being a business owner also puts, puts, puts you as an entrepreneur, puts you in a place where you can become a diva. You know, but what is great about her is her simplicity. You know, it's her. She's very subtle. Yes, yes. And, you know, she carries herself yeah, with a lot of. Tell, even from afar, you can see. Yes, just, there's a lot of grace. Very, a lot of grace subtle. to her. And her, how she relates with younger people. It's mm. nice. It's really nice. I hope I'll be like that when I'm my age. <laughs> mm, when I'm my age. And at this one, you know, Kezua, who's also publisher of TW Magazine. Yeah. Uh, very balanced. She, as, as I said, she, she has six or seven children. And that's a handful. That's a Ooh. Yes, but when you see her, she looks fantastic for someone that has six or seven children, you know. And she's also very simple. And, you know, those are some of the things that I, I most admire about women who, who are great, who are bright, intelligent, they're very God fearing, but at the same time, they're doing great things in the marketplace. So, I mean, again, I mean, just talking about, you know, using uh, Zara as an example, uh, the, the issue of uh, the buying power in Nigeria, that, mm. that's one major thing, mm. you know, that I, I think uh, would might not necessarily make a lot of Nigerian businesses have the kind of outlets that we actually need to have. Because mm. I, I still find it frustrating that a lot of people would have to come from very far places to mm -hmm. Lagos to buy certain things mm -hmm. when those things could be where they are. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. tell, tell us something about that. Buy, buying power is going to get better. You know, um, I, I believe that in this new dispensation, mm -hmm. um, more money will come into the system. Okay. Um, government will attract foreign investment and of you know, there are ripple effects to roads. For example, somebody's fixing one road in Ore, for example, and when that road is being fixed, somebody will have to employ people. And employ people and the wives of those people will begin to have money and they would have access to cash and they'll be able to buy some lipsticks that they ordinarily would not have been able to. So I'm very excited about that. I believe that that's, and, and that will aid those sort of expansion plans that we want to have. Um, the banking industry has done fantastic. With UBA, for example, going to Senegal, and Sierra Leone and Gambia and all the yeah. cities and Access Bank being able to move. It's Nigerian money that they've been yeah. able to use to do this expansion. Um, some of those cities, for example, what is Sierra Leone that has about 7 million people in the entire country, as opposed to Lagos State that has 13 million. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. So, so I, I'm excited about Nigeria and I think that more, when foreign investments come in and we start to expand our business, we employ more people, it's just a ripple effect. The more money will be in the system, more people will have buying power mm -hmm. and the economy will grow um, and um, the role of the entrepreneur is, is going to be very significant. Mm -hmm. In spite of all these challenges, mm -hmm. you've you've stayed, you've stayed mm -hmm. this, mm -hmm. doing the same business, yes, growing, yes, progressing, yes. I like that. So how did you do that? Some young person out there that is just coming up, mm. starting business, mm. upcoming entrepreneurs, mm -hmm. or even people that already have businesses they've started mm. but are struggling, mm. say something to them. Do you know that that's what you ought to be doing? First of all, mm. if you don't know that that's what you ought to be doing, number one. That aids you that even if I'm being challenged, this is what I ought to be doing. This is the place I should be. That's one. Two. So I should stay there. Yes, yeah, stay there too. Mm. Um, am I making progress? You know, mm. you know. I love, I love what what the word progress means. And mm. it's not an instantaneous wealth. It's not an instantaneous success. Mm. It's a one day at a time moving mm. forward. Mm. So we've done thirteen years, and in thirteen years we have. 10 branches. Well, if you calculate that, you say to yourself, when did you start expanding? Maybe only about two and a half years or three, yeah. three years ago, mm -hmm. out of the 13 mm -hmm. years. Um, but I, when people ask me, how's House Tower doing? I say, we're in a good place. And why I say that is because we are pro consistently progressing. Exactly. You know, we're putting structure in place mm -hmm. all the time. Mm -hmm. We're creating policies that change and evolve mm -hmm. by time, mm -hmm. by a number of mm -hmm. new staff. Mm -hmm. We are we are increasing our revenue. We are trying to work on our profitability if government mm. will sort out our life issues. Mm. And you're you know, making sure. your brand very strong. Yes. You are big on that. Mm. I know you are big mm. on that. Mm. Mm. You know, that's what, that's your, what... your brand is strong mm. and um, you believe so much in branding. Mm. Yes, I do. I in do. fact, tell me something about branding because I know you're passionate about branding. Mm. I know you talk about branding mm. a lot. Yeah, so. I, think, I, think that, I think that branding is, is it's how you express, it's the expression of, of who you are mm. and, and your values are being expressed in mm. your branding. And I think that every business has to identify and know what that brand is and then express it to the extent that the customers mm. or the consumers mm. can accept it. Mm. Um, and I think that um, it's our responsibility as founders mm. of businesses or chief marketing officers mm. to consistently bring it out because mm. the brand is what's going to attract the, the kind of people that you want to employ who can take the business to the next level. To the next level. It's mm. a brand that would 
mm. attract the customers mm. um, who would want to associate with the product. Mm. So branding is, is very key. It's mm. very key. What, what, what do you think is happening with branding in Nigeria now? Mm. You know, because I mean, a few years ago, we, we didn't have uh, brands that had you know outlets, branches all over the place, but. Things have evolved, mm, mm, you know, over the years. Mm. What do you see happening in the next ten years in Nigeria, vis-a-vis -vis branding and all of that? Yeah, I, I think that I think that um, we're already in a good place in Nigeria already. Mm. Where there's, I can see a lot of movement in that direction, yeah. and a, a lot of people who own businesses. I can I give an example of Ouch and um, Uche Nanji, for example. Okay. You, the amount of information, the amount of time they're investing in reading, mm. and doing research, and traveling also, you know. The ability to be able to get a visa and go abroad opens up your head and your mind. So much exposure.